In the world of electrical testing, one cable poses a grave danger to us all. Now on the surface, this cable, I know, looks seemingly harmless, but you don't know it like I do. This unapologetic piece of wire, let me tell you, has been stripped of its manners. And if you do manage to muster up the courage to plug it in, you better brace yourself because it's a one-way ticket to Voltageville. This bit of copper wrapped in plastic is fully capable of becoming a twisted fire starter, sending machinery into meltdown and putting you six feet under. But don't worry guys, I'm gonna show you how you can tame this beast and keep yourself, your gear and your workspace safe. Now guys, I'm actually quite shocked and obviously the pun was intended there that I haven't been caught out more often by this cable, the amount of times that I've used it for testing control panels. And I think actually from what I can remember, I've only been caught out by it once and once was enough to make me realize how dangerous this cable can be. Anyway, before we get into what the cable is, when and why I use it, and then how to make one, I just need to swap my headwear. It's got a bit cold in here. And also we're using an overhead camera and I don't want the peak getting in the way. So I'm just gonna do that now. Right, headwear sorted, that feels a lot better. So anyway, what is this cable? This is the cable of death, the killer cable. And it's, it's pretty straightforward, nothing too complicated here. But what it is, is twin and earth with the cores stripped out, as you can see here, and then just a standard plug socket on the end. So when and why do I use this cable? So I predominantly use this cable for testing control panels. So after I've built a control panel and I'm going through the testing procedure, rather than having a fixed supply cable as you would have on site, with a dedicated MCB. This is where this cable comes in because I can just plug this straight into the mains obviously and then connect, providing it's single phase, these three cables, so the live, the neutral and the earth into my main incoming isolator and obviously the earth bar as well or the earth point connection. And the reason for this guy should be pretty obvious is I'm not gonna be pulling in a fixed cable with a dedicated MCB coming from a consumer unit or wherever when I'm just testing a panel in the workshop before it goes out to site. So the next thing guys is how do you make one of these cables? And firstly, you've gotta be very careful with these cables. I don't encourage anyone who isn't electrically qualified to make or use one of these cables. I can't stress that enough and should really only be used by people who are actually testing electrical systems, control systems. As I said, I use it purely for testing control panels before they go off to site. So how do we make one of these cables? So firstly, we obviously need a piece of cable, twin and earth. Secondly, we need a plug socket and then Finally, what we need are some tools and some ferrules to build the cable. So ideally, guys, this is a short piece of cable. It's all I've got lying around. Ideally, you want this sort of two meters, three meters, depending on your workshop and where your sockets are. But yeah, I would say three, five meters on the safe side. First thing you want to do, and this tool is incredible, a Nipex Ergo Stripper. They are reasonably expensive for what they are, but they're an absolute godsend. When you're doing cable like this, when you're doing control cable, category cable, they're just well worth the investment. So I would suggest you want at least two of these ergo strippers in terms of like how much you need to strip the outer insulation back. So about there. So let's take that out a bit off and then strip it back. We might be able to pull it off like this. It's freezing, so this cable is not very workable. So I think I'll I'll use this other little bit on the Ergo Stripper to get the end stripped back a little bit. Doesn't help when your hands are frozen either. I think I'm gonna need some pliers as well. There we go. And let's just take off the ends where I pulled them with the pliers. Take those back. Next thing is these Nipex single core strippers. Again, these are the best cable strippers I've found and have been using for years, so highly recommend these as well. So I've already set the depth to the right depth for the ferrules that we're gonna use. So strip those. 
And then the final tool that we're gonna use is this ferrule crimper with a set of ferrules. So this was just from Amazon, nothing too expensive. I don't think you really need to go as far as paying 100 quid plus for the Nipex version. These have done me very well for the last, well, however many years. So recommend them as well. So let's get ferrules on the end. And notice that I'm not twisting the copper. I found twisting the copper, it actually thickens the core and it makes it harder to get into the ferrules. So just slide them straight straight on. All right, now let's crimp them with the ferrule crimper. One, two, three. Okay, that's one end done. And remember to close the box on your ferrules because I'm sure we've all experienced ferrules getting knocked over and then having to employ a small child to, to sort them out. Let's be honest, no, none of us want to go through and sort that out. Now this plug socket is really old. That's the only one I've got knocking about. So obviously we want to make sure that it's fused to the right rating uh, for the cable and then get roughly the, the length. I mean, this should be easy for everyone to do it's just wiring a plug so i'm actually going to skip this bit guys it's just wiring a plug very simple i'm sure we all know how to do that probably one of the first things that we learned on our apprenticeships or when we were starting in the industry so i'm going to skip forward so we've skipped forward guys and we're back to the cable that i've been using for however long so this cable is a one two Three. It's about three and a half, four meters, my one. And then I'm gonna take you through the procedure of actually connecting and disconnecting this uh, for this control panel here. So it should be obvious, should be common sense, but sometimes common sense isn't all that common. So what we need to do first is connect these cables into the main isolator. And we obviously don't want that connected to the mains. So that needs to be left out. So let's connect these single cores into the main isolator to start with. Okay, so first thing guys is, well, probably if we've just built this, we won't have these covers on, but we need to remove those. It doesn't really matter the order in which you do them, but I always just do the earth in first. So let's do that. Main incoming earth connection point. Also remove this bit of trunk in. I'll get the neutral in, the live in. And then the final thing, guys, before we switch on, is we need to get our dental tooth inspection tool from Boddington's, as you can see there, official merch, uh, and just check that we're not crimping down on the insulation, and both of those look okay. And then what we want to do is we want to plug it into the wall. We've made sure that our main isolator is in the off position, and we can switch that on. Plug it in, switch it on. We wanna make sure all of our MCBs are off. Obviously I've tested this panel before, so they were on, but they should all be off. Next thing is we just wanna measure the voltage. And so I'm getting 250 volts AC here, which is quite high. So before I switch on, I might wanna check that all the components within the panel can take that increase of voltage. A few moments later. I've checked everything, I'm happy with that voltage. And then the final thing, guys, is to switch on. Okay, so now we've tested our panel and we're happy with everything. So now we need to reverse the order in which we did when connecting the cable. So pulling that out first at the mains and then we're just simply removing the cables from the main isolator and the earth bar or earth incoming connection. And guys, if you're not already a member of our private Facebook community group where we help businesses and individuals develop skills, knowledge and understanding to help them progress their careers and businesses into automation, controls, smart homes, you know, that sort of industry, then I recommend clicking the link in the description and getting involved. And also, if you're interested in seeing how a control panel is built from scratch, I think you'll most likely like this video just here. <laughs>